What is up, YouTube, and welcome back to another episode of Oxygen Not Included, Season 3. Back into the gas now. That's obviously blocked off. I don't know if you can see that, but yeah, there's towers below and beneath it. Um, so we need to open that up, which I'm doing now, in order to get that built in. This is one of the three gas lines that are going in that we did at the end of the last episode, where we're getting a much better oxygen setup for the base, uh, using electrolysis and the liquids that we have. Just add a caveat before we move on. If you could make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, I'd appreciate that very much. And let's continue. So the second electrolysis room is built, finished. Uh, just needs the wiring doing. But of course, with the pipes not being quite complete, there's no major rush. Also, I've noticed that the bristleberry farm is over temperature again. So I am going to look at putting in some cooling for that as well. From the beginning of this season actually to now, I have realized that likely I'm not going to bother doing the whole gas cooling any longer. Uh, we did it for the Dreco room as well, but it's just really inefficient. Now, the reason I did it that way was because I was worried that the liquid would freeze, the, the water, which is the most ready available liquid we can use and it would freeze uh, if it got too cold but of course the cooling systems and loops we're using is based on the electromagnetic generators is that what they're called anyway you know what i mean i've built a few hundred of them by now i'm sure um and the minimum they go down to is 10 degrees. So they can't get anywhere near zero. Therefore, they can't freeze water. Therefore, water being so efficient, I'm going to use that moving forward. So any of the gas ones you see there over on the left-hand side, you could just see the, the gas system going into the Dreco farm. I will be ripping that out as soon as I can. And any, any other cooling systems um, that are done with gas, I'll be ripping those out as well and replacing for the fluid because they are, well, proven in the real world to actually work. So that is what I'm going to do. Now, I am actually turning off smooth hatches. So we do have in this setup two types of hatches that is eventually going to be obviously three for the diamond as well. So you have the diamond hatch, the smooth hatch, and the stone hatch. The smooth hatches eat raw ores and... Uh, crap out refined or uh, refined metal but actually what I'm struggling with at the minute is not refined metal I have plenty of refined metal not steel but the others uh, what I'm actually struggling for is the ores that you use to do the more basic things so I am going to stop them and basically keep all of the ore that I have available to me as it is the only processing I want to do now is from the volcanoes that are giving me the iron and I think there is a copper volcano, but I don't think I've moved it yet. There's a gold one or two as well. So we've got gold, we've got iron that's effectively infinite, although it is slow. But you can see there we've actually got iron processed, 40 tons of iron 12.3 tons of gold processed as well imagine 12 how much is 12 tons of gold worth how rich are we in this game just to be a nerd i've actually just worked that out apparently 12 tons of gold uh, currently this is 2024 22nd of june it's about eight, 1800 pounds per ounce and anyway long math uh, we are, it's about 761 million pounds worth of gold. So three quarters of a billion. So we're not quite Elon Musk, but, you know, we're pretty rich. Bearing in mind that volcano is given us infinite, so actually we're technically richer than Elon Musk. We've just got to wait for the volcano to erupt a few more times. Anyway, I digress. So the oxygen now is going into the base in the ports. As we established, you saw there, I actually dropped it down to two from three. And took out one of the pumps as well. Two reasons. One, because the three pipes wasn't working as good as I needed it to. And also, the power consumption pushed it too far. Two pumps running full time is more than enough. Now, the downside is you saw there on the temperature gauge that the room, of course, electrolysis creates a lot of heat, is too warm. 
So we immediately need to now sort a cooling system for this, a cooling loop, because this gas, oxygen, gas, is going directly into the base, and of course that will warm up the base slowly, because as we've established, gas is very efficient at heating or cooling things. But if I do a nice, simple liquid cooling loop throughout this room, making the gases in that room much cooler, i.e. 10 to 20 degrees, they will then help keep the base comfortable for everyone. Usually late game, I always have my base get far too warm. I am not going to allow this to happen in this series. So I am fixing the fight on heat straight away, and we are doing it the way, only way we know how, which is um, using the generators. But also, I'm going to put a proper call-in loop, radiators, etc. in the base as well. Each floor will have its own thermostat. Each side will have its own thermostat as well. That's the plan, anyway. And it does happen. I know it does, because I've already done it. So, subscribe for that. But for now, we'll just keep making sure that the actual gases we're forcing into the base are as temperature controlled as possible. And yes, I'm aware there are tools that you can, like the gases you put them through, we've used it before, and liquids through, and it cools it down quite significantly. It's 10 degrees each time. But it throws out too much heat. I don't want that. The way I'm doing this is basically I'm turning all of this heat that we don't want into energy, electricity, and that way we're getting two birds, one stone, and there's no aftermarket stuff we have to deal with at a later date. So this is the calling room as it stands, and before you know it, it's going to look very, very messy because I'm going to force them to get this done pretty quick. Three, two, one. Look at the state of that. But we're okay. So this is simple. I'm not calling down the original room, so the one that does the Atmo suits. I am. We've got somebody suffocating somehow. They're suffocating in an Atmo suit. That makes no sense unless it's stayed in it for far too long. Or they're a very slow runner, it seems. Anyway, um, so yeah, the top electrolysis room, I'm not calling yet because that's just going into the Atmos suits anyway. And I'm not worried about that at all. Um, the bottom room, which is for the base, of course, I am going to do that. Now, what I've done there, if you noticed, I unequipped the Atmos suit because it had no oxygen left in it anyway. I'm not sure why this duplicate is being a bit... How do you put it? Um... Not smart. Yeah, that's a nice way of saying it. Because they are stopping in an area where they can't breathe. It's too hot. They're taking damage. They're losing oxygen. They better not die because that's not my fault. And now they're running up to that chlorine level, which is just going to make their eyes bleed. Let's try and forget about them and hope that they don't die. I think we've only lost two people so far, which is pretty good for me. And it's all stupidity on their part where they get into situations, i.e. they dig themselves into situations where they get stuck. Looks like Gene has managed to found some oxygen just above that carbon dioxide, no, not carbon dioxide, chlorine and natural gas layer. So she's good to go. Now, everybody's in Atmo suits, and I'm starting to get the made a mess warning. This is all connected, and I wasn't really thinking about it at the time. So, because they are. Because I've set everything to be level 10 importance, they will ignore all other things apart from the schedule to do so. So, even if their Atmo suits are running out of oxygen or they need to go to the toilet, they'll ignore that because of the level that you've set. Which is why, if you've noticed, I've just gone around to all the level 10s and dropped them down to 9, which will allow them to go back to normal at doing whatever it is they need to do. This one is imperative because it's blocked off by the floor, and that is actual oxygen for the base. We did manage to get our first pip, actually, from the printer. So I'm just going to throw a very quick room together. A drop-off, a grooming station... And then some hydroponics because apparently they eat the reed fibre. Now the reed fibre that we're actually using, you can see we've got 30 units. Um, that is just from the Drecos and I have used a lot of pictures and various other things at most suits. Remember they all use the reed fibre. Usually by now though I'd have thousands because I'd have a farm going. But I'm not using the polluted water to do that because I'm allowing the Drecos to do it. If we get to a point where I'm struggling and need... 50 to 100 reed fiber really quickly i can set up a farm 
But for now, if well, so far, I mean, we're uh, we're at cycle three hundred and three. I've not needed to. It's always been sat in between thirty and fifty reed fibre in storage. And remember, all of the reed fibre we've had used and created so far has not wasted any of the water. And by that, I mean polluted water, which we could have turned into clean water. So I am gonna use a bit here and it is gonna be minute. And the only water I'm gonna to use to water these plants for the pip or pips, hopefully in the future, is the toilet water. So whatever gets flushed, it will go into these as it goes past. And if there's too much, it will carry on going past and into the recycle process as normal. That is the maximum amount of effort for now I am putting with growing reed fiber. And I think it's a first for me because I usually always have a reed fiber farm. This is the first time I'm using Drecos only. And as long as they keep their numbers up, we should be okay. I mean, plastic, we've got nearly 80 tons. So, yeah. But we, we knew that was going to explode because that setup we've got is constant. It will always run. It will always be running. It's never going to run out. We've got far too much oil and petroleum stored already. Sorry, not petroleum. Yeah, well, we, we have in that setup. On the on the left-hand side there, you say we've got too much oil as well. So we're not going to be struggling for oil, petroleum, uh, or plastic anytime soon. And I think there may be a chance to get a good amount of sour gas. Now, I think the sour gas is just petroleum turned into a gas, which is actually sour gas. I'm sure it is. Uh, I've not checked though, so you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's where it goes to. And sour gas has its uses uh, for some critters as well. So that might be a thing to try. Certainly be interesting to give it a go. You can see our sunbug, no, the, what are they called? Shine bugs, there we go. Shine bug popula population has exploded again with our new fandangled uh, incubation system. And I'm pretty sure there's about 20 eggs in the weights as well. So, yeah, we're not struggling for shine bugs anytime soon. And all the other critters' populations are gen gently increasing also. So, I have ripped out that platform now, that whole thing, as I said. And I've done what you can see there. It's still struggling. The heat has been pushed up there to the top, which looks bad. But actually, that means that the heat down below is not as hot. Uh, but it is still damaging quite a few of those. Uh, below that platform, you can see there is gold on the floor. That gold is still probably eight, 900 degrees. Um, that's not practical for us. And there is a bit of overheat damage happening as well. Of course, if uh, the overheat damage continues, I'll just stop them because it wastes steel. I am making them out of steel because it's the only thing I've got that can even slightly withstand them temperatures. We haven't yet got to the uh, Thurium or the, I can't remember what it's called, but there's one that gives you 500 degrees, which would be fantastic, and then there's one that gives you 900 uh, that you can make, but a bit later on, you need the fancy forge and a few other materials as well, including a special magic plastic. Again, something that we're going to get into if the series goes on for long enough, but more importantly, you can see I am finally building what you've all loved and seen before, I hope, and that is my gas storage facility. So way outside of the base, stripped away from everywhere, so the temperature doesn't really matter. Each floor is going to be one gas. Um, and there is actually one floor more than I need, because I need five in total when I've made six, I think it is. Yes. So five in total. So I'm going to be storing polluted oxygen, carbon dioxide, natural gas, hydrogen, chlorine. Pretty sure that was five things. Uh, the sixth one will be for whatever we get to. And like I mentioned a bit ago, maybe sour gas. Or there is phosphorus gas as well about, but I'm not sure if I'm going to be using that yet or not. So all I'm going to do is quickly just chuck in the first set of tiles to colour color code it. So at a glance, I and anyone that's watching can see. Also the pipe, the transport pipe goes to each of the floors just to help people get there quicker. The duplicates, that's also for, for well, actually mainly for, for building, but... And they're going to load in on the left-hand side, and the far right tank will be what is the one that stores it first. This does mean that I'm going to have to reroute a lot of the gases that I'm doing, and a couple of storage tanks that I already have full that I'll move here, but it's reasonably simple once you've got the main structure. The first thing I'm going to do is here is chuck in three, part, uh, three pumps... 
and just start pumping out all of this outside gas into a storage. I'm not going to get the whole outside of the base to a vacuum. It's going to be very difficult to do that. And there's still loads of gas gaps and uh, chlorine biomes with bleach stone and stuff all over the place. And even polluted water that's off gas in polluted oxygen. But if I get it down to grams or micrograms, that is going to be enough for me. Now, the downside here is that the three pumps to do it most efficiently would have three pipes each. But they're all effectively going to go into one pipe for the sorting. And unfortunately, there's no real easy way to make that work better. The best way and the only way I'm going to do it is just time. So each floor gets a filter. Of course, that filter then depicts what they are. The top one's going to be polluted oxygen, I think. Then it will be carbon dioxide, uh, natural gas, hydrogen, and finally chlorine. With the sixth one being left empty for now. I am not storing oxygen here anyway. Um, I'll have another way of doing that for the base. But what I'll do is loop that way you saw me bring the pipe back up again that's going to go over to the base so the only thing that i'm going to get that's not going to get stored here is the only thing that i've got that's not filtered here and that is oxygen so any oxygen gets into this system it'll automatically go straight back into the base and just a bit further on this is what i mean by the oxygen line so the oxygen line is just going to come back in and go straight into the base and to save it backing up i may need to chuck on a gas tank just to give it a backup if the pipe backs up with oxygen, everything will stop. So I don't want that to happen. I would rather it go into a storage facility and then get drained from there as and when. Don't worry if that doesn't make sense. You will see it visually very soon. In the meantime, you can see we've got three biobots there running around doing jobs. There they go. Great stuff. Just be careful of your steel because it will get eaten pretty quickly if you start forgetting about them. Off subject to the gases a little bit, I am ripping out the central background wallpaper. I am going to replace it with something nicer, but basically I'm going for a bit of an upgrade. So the resources we have now don't really match what we had at the start. It also makes it very difficult for the temperature control because the wallpaper holds on to the temperature quite strongly. So if you are struggling with temperatures, uh, make sure to pay attention to the wallpaper as well. What I'm actually going to do is rip out all of those wallpapers that you saw, the colours, and I'm going to do a brand new set using all of the new materials we now have. Specifically the actual refined metals because there's much better colour contrasts in the refined metals. And there we go. Up and running. Majority of it's going to be oxygen and polluted oxygen for now. You can see that was the majority of that area anyway. There is some hydrogen there, but that's all the way at the top. So until we start reducing the amount of oxygen and polluted oxygen, you won't see that. Here goes the polluted oxygen now going into its final resting place for a bit. Hydrogen a little bit further down. We'll go into that third line, I think, or maybe the fourth. And any oxygen that you saw there getting collected, of course, is just going to go around the loop, across to the center of the base and into the base itself. Like so. You can see it happening there, actually. Also, now I'm pulling out all the gases, uh, and you can see there, I had a wall between the, the power spy. Now, to the left of it, where it's cold, that's fine, but to the right of it, it really doesn't matter. So I'm actually replacing a lot of the insulated tile there for air tiles, just to allow all of these gases to actually get round and move places. The power spine's temperature can be easily regulated with a cooling loop, should I need it, but to be honest, there's no reason to. Um, you're not going to get that much power out of it because although it does look warm, it takes a while to get that warm. Cooling it down will be very quick and then you just, it wouldn't be worth the resources in my opinion. And it's certainly not going to get warm enough to matter with the guys and their Atmos suits. So the pip's looking happy there. I'm just checking actually to figure out how I get the various different morphs because there is seven, I believe, in total for the mod. Um, and of course, the first one is the cuddly one. Now, they are glum, or that one is glum, uh, which means they're one, they're basically m negative one mood. I can give them plus one mood by putting in this little cat tree thing that they all seem to love, that gives them the cozy buff, which gives them plus one. With that built, the little guy should be pretty happy then. 
it would be a good idea to probably put some uh, natural flooring in there for them because I know they do like to plant seeds uh, as a hobby. It's what the pips like to do and what people use them for usually, which is why you normally have them in parks. Back over to these here. As you can see, they're ones that kept getting damaged on the right-hand side. I've just ripped out. These three seem to be surviving, and they are working. Slow, very inefficient, but they are indeed working. So I'm going to leave them alone for a little bit and see what happens. The cooling loop now on the gases is working as well. As you can see, the differential there between the top and the bottom room is very clear. Uh, I've put some pipe. You can see the pipe there that goes through that room because I had to. Um, it is insulated to stop it from taking that heat away. But all in all, we're looking good. Everything's tidy. That room is overpressured and needs to be ent emptied ASAP. So for the next episode, we are certainly going to look at the super petroleum production and emptying out that oil once and for all. Thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, please click like. Any comments are welcome. As always, subscribe for more. Take care. Goodbye.